Mayor, you can go ahead. We can start now. Thank you. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. I'm very pleased to be here today with the Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson, who's the chair of the Economic and Community Development Committee of City Council, and with uh, Councillor Joe Cressy, who's the chair of the uh, Toronto Public Health, the Board of Health. And I just want to say at the outset that uh, they have shown a great leadership together with staff, who I'm going to recognize uh, at, at the uh, towards the end of my remarks in doing something that I'm very uh, proud of. Uh, we said from the beginning, from the very beginning, and it seems like so long ago, that we were going to set uh, a high standard with respect to how we treated uh, some of our communities that required extra support uh, and attention. Some people who were more vulnerable or, or more heavily impacted upon by uh, COVID-19. And I'm pleased to say that uh, we have, I think, done that. We've, we've set that standard. We've achieved that standard uh, for this country. And indeed, I'm proud when I participate in various uh, panels that I've done with other mayors uh, about pandemic-related matters that people are taking note of some of the things that Toronto uh, has done. And I think today's announcement is no exception. And so I just want to note that at the outset. And I will, of course, extend my thanks beyond thanking my two colleagues who are joining me here today to uh, the appropriate staff in, in just a moment or two. COVID-19, as we know, of course, has brought to light a variety of issues in our city, in our country, and in fact, around the world. Uh, what is clear during the pandemic uh, is that there are extraordinary impacts that COVID-19 has had on a number of communities within our own city, including the black community. According to data, the highest COVID-19 cases, 26%, were among black people of African and Caribbean descent, a community of people that represents only 9% of the population. So a, a disproportionate impact to a huge extent uh, in, in the case of the impact of COVID-19. This is as a result of uh, longstanding systemic health inequities related to poverty, uh, to racism, and other forms of marginalization and lack of access to opportunity, which have been exacerbated by the pandemic. We are committed to taking action on this data. Just as we as a city government are undertaking a broad series of measures to combat discrimination, including anti-black racism, so too are we gonna act on the particular impact that this pandemic has had on the black community. In the case of the fight against COVID-19, we realized that we needed a more targeted approach to reach black communities. What we're announcing today are steps forward. This work further cements the commitment we have to supporting our black communities. These initiatives under the heading of Black Community COVID Response Plan are meant to specifically provide supports to the Black communities in Toronto so as to help members of those communities to fight off the virus, to fight off its effects on them, uh, and to try to address some of the root causes for the extraordinarily disproportionate impacts on them. Through partnerships with the community agencies that are black led and primarily black serving and these kinds of partnerships throughout have been absolutely essential to all the efforts that we've made to help people that require extra supports. We are going to increase wraparound supports for black Torontonians and families to help them to stay well physically, mentally and emotionally through the pandemic. The city has invested $6.8 million in funding and partnered with 12 community agencies to provide this kind of targeted outreach and support to the top 10 neighborhoods with the highest percentage of black Torontonians and the highest COVID-19 case rates. And the kinds of supports we're talking about include increases in culturally responsive mental health supports. This is vitally important in and of itself. Uh, food access and food security assistance, mobile and community-based testing, mobile services to support seniors and people with disabilities, and these are things like food delivery or wellness checks, a commitment to continue advocating for income support and housing security, some of those supports we've been advocating for during the course of the pandemic, and of course, before and after as well, and coordinating health policies, programs, and provisions targeted to the Black communities in the City of Toronto, and for that matter, beyond. I want to share a few testimonials with you so that you can see and feel the impact that this uh, kind of extra support is having in these communities. In the York Weston Pelham area of the city, Unison Health and Community Services has shared the story of one resident who is very thankful for the meals that she has received for herself and for her family. And her children are happy because they're going to have something to eat. These are families and, and, and unfortunately they do exist in the city of Toronto 
who don't know when their next meal will be, how they will get it, or where it will come from. This work that we're doing with our partner agencies mean that children and families in these hard hit areas are being fed. In the Humber Summit area, the Delta Family Resource Center tells us that residents have co who come to them for support are thankful for the weekly food and gift card donations, the PPE and the virtual programming that they receive to help them understand better how to avoid coming into contact with the virus. Recipients of prepared meals continue to express their appreciation for the culturally sensitive food that they receive. It might not seem like something that is a big deal, but oftentimes traditional food supplies through food banks aren't able to accommodate the cultural needs of various populations that we have in our city, including our black communities. By investing in black led and black serving organizations, we are ensuring that residents in our city who need help and who have been COVID impacted the most are receiving what they actually need. This type of support is a lifeline for these families and for many other families across the city. This plan and the work being carried out by the community partners is supplemental to the work being done through TO supports, which we announced last year. Now, another big part of our fight against COVID-19 is our vaccination rollout. Vaccine hesitancy, and as you know, our responsibilities, the federal government is responsible for the supplying of the vaccine, the province for setting the prioritization, and we're responsible for more of the activities at the grassroots and actually implementing some of these programs. Vaccine hesitancy, which would cause people to be hesitant even to go to a place we might have established uh, for the administration of a vaccine when the time comes, hopefully not too long from now, vaccine hesitancy is high among black residents. And that means we have to do everything possible to provide them with the information they need to get around and get over that hesitancy. The city has partnered again with community agencies to provide COVID-19 health and safety awareness in black communities and work with experts to prepare for and to support our immunization rollout. The experts make up what we have named the Black Scientists Task Force on Vaccine Equity which was created in partnership with the Taibu Community Health Center to effectively address the vaccine trust and confidence issues across the black communities. For those who don't know, Taibu is, Taibu is highly respected, uh, based in Scarborough, for its work with the black communities, but in particular in the area of mental health. The task force, which includes Toronto Public Health and many of Canada's top black scientists involved in key aspects of vaccine development and black public health, will review the major concerns and the issues around COVID-19 uh, testing and the levels of vaccine acceptance and develop public health recommendations to effectively address the concerns of black residents and the concerns they have, especially as regards the vaccine. This task force will present a final report on its findings and recommendations to the city by April the 30th. To ensure that we're moving things along starting sooner than that, though, on February the 13th, a series of free virtual town hall meetings will be available for residents to attend. They will be hosted by members of the task force and by several of these community organizations that we have partnered with. Each session will focus on a different topic. The first session, which will take place on Saturday, February the 13th, from 2 until 5 in the afternoon, will focus on the historical and contemporary issues of trustworthiness around vaccines and medical science. The panelists will include a few expert members of the task force. So I encourage all black residents in the city of Toronto to participate in these sessions. And you can find out more information about these virtual town halls and about the work of the task force at the city's website, toronto.ca. Before I finish, as I promised at the outset, I want to give a very special word of thanks to our city staff who've been working hard over the entirety of the pandemic over the past year. Uh, to find ways to support all of our residents, of course, across the city in new and different ways sometimes, but also to ensure in particular that those who are more vulnerable are getting the extra support that they need. It's fine for us to set a standard that we want it to be very high in terms of supporting our, some of our vulnerable and disproportionately impacted residents, but there are people who actually develop the programs and actually implement them that are, of course, more essential than our declarations in this regard. And so a special thanks goes to Denise Campbell, the Executive Director of Social Development, Finance and Administration, and Ina Nia Grant for the work that they, the two of them, have been the leaders in doing this work on implementing and developing these initiatives and the ones that we previously announced through TO supports. As well, I want to say thank you to the Black Scientists Task Force on Vaccine Equity for the work that they are doing as a public service 
uh, and to our ongoing uh, community partnerships with these different organizations uh, who have helped us so much to deliver these supports to uh, people who uh, need extra Addressing these concerns requires a team effort and none of it would have been possible without all of the people I've mentioned. And of course, they'd be the first to say without the teams that in turn work with them. So thank you for committing to help us uh, to ensure that black Torontonians get the support they need, which we've been able to identify and now hopefully step forward to begin uh, to meet uh, in, in a more fulsome uh, manner. On that note, I would like to invite uh, somebody who's also been instrumental in making sure these supports are there and these issues have been at the forefront of our discussions uh, throughout the pandemic, and that is uh, Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson to say a few words. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and good morning. And uh, just before I begin, Mr. Mayor, I want to compliment you on your leadership and uh, that of Councillor Cressy as well. Mr. Mayor, you have been steadfast with respect to the idea that all Torontonians will actually be offered assistance and so on with resources provided by the city. And I want to commend you for your leadership. So thank you very much. The past year has been the most challenging time in the lifetime of nearly all Torontonians. For those of us who live in vulnerable communities, the challenge is um, acquiring food, income, employment, and housing existed long before the pandemic and in fact have been exacerbated by the spread of COVID. Black Torontonians are contracting COVID at a greater rate than other residents in the city and are less likely to line up for vaccinations against the virus than other residents of other races and background in the city. To stop the spread of the virus, it is critical that residents in the black community have access to appropriate health and safety information about COVID-19 and the vaccines developed to control its effects. And that they have access to the support they need if they have been exposed to or test positive for the virus. Initiatives like Toronto Support Equity Action Plan, the Black Community COVID Response Plan, and the Black Scientists Task Force on Vaccine Equity are essential to provide appropriate and timely support to residents who need it. The city does amazing work under the most trying circumstances since the declaration of the pandemic. We have rolled out numerous initiatives in record time pivoted as we gain greater understanding of the threat and change course when it was necessary to battle the virus. Staff in the city's social development finance and administration has worked diligently to establish the most effective community and professional partnerships to help us inform and serve the black residents. Our plans aim to reduce COVID-19 in black communities and increase the rate of vaccinations. I want to encourage, and I want to repeat, I want to encourage all members of the Black community to participate in the three virtual sessions that the Mayor spoke about that are scheduled for uh, February and March. As Mayor Tory mentioned, information about the Black Scientist Task Force on Vaccine Equity can be found on the city's website as, they are, as well as other links and details of upcoming town hall uh, meetings. I'd like to take a moment to extend my personal gratitude to the many partner community agencies that have worked with us over the past year to address the urgent needs of our residents. The city can only do so much on its own. Our partnerships with these community agencies is essential to connecting with residents in their communities, helping us to understand their needs and showing us where we have to step in to fill in the gaps. The partnership developed through the Black Community COVID Response Plan and the funding allocated to Black agencies serving Toronto, Black Torontonians from the TO Support Investment Fund are critical to our work on reducing the rate of COVID in the Black community. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Councillor Cressy, to deliver his remarks. Councillor Cressy. Well, thank you, Deputy Mayor and, and Mayor Tory, uh, both of you for your relentless and, and principled leadership on this file and many others. Um, to beat COVID, we know we have to protect those hardest hit by the virus. Uh, 
to beat COVID, it's fair to say that we must address many of the pre-existing inequities that this pandemic has laid bare. That's what it means. In fact, that's what's required to be all in this together. And so early in the pandemic, Toronto Public Health began collecting and sharing data on COVID cases broken down by geography, by income, by race, by housing status. By now, many of you know the numbers. 49% half of Toronto's cases have been people living on lower incomes. 79%, the overwhelming majority of Toronto's COVID cases have been people of color. But what's been of particular concern has been a consistent and disproportionate impact of COVID on Toronto's black communities. Despite representing only 9% of our city's population, over the course of the pandemic, between 16 and 33% of our COVID cases have been black Torontonians. Right now, 24% of all COVID hospitalizations are black Torontonians. And so when we, when we saw these numbers, I can tell you we all felt a sense of urgency to immediately address them. And so in the fall, as you know, we launched our, our equity action plan, the first of its kind in the country, alongside a host of targeted measures in hard hit neighborhoods. And today, as the mayor and deputy mayor have, note, have noted, we're following through on our pledge to launch Toronto's black community COVID response plan. It's a comprehensive set of actions in partnership with 12 agencies on the ground to not only provide enhanced support for black Torontonians during COVID, but also to support targeted black community vaccination campaigns. And it's at this point, I do wanna pause and recognize leaders in the black community. While Mayor Tory and Deputy Mayor Thompson and I may be here announcing this plan, leaders, advocates, and health experts in the black community have been leading and in fact pushing for this for a long time. You know, community health centers like Black Creek or Rexdale or Parkdale Queen West and Taibu, organizations like the Black Health Alliance, the Thorncliffe Neighborhood Organization and the Wellesley Institute, and individuals like Angela Robertson, Kwame McKenzie, Safia Ahmed, Cheryl Presco, Paul Bailey, Lieben Deborah Michael, I could go on and on and on because it's leaders and organizations in the black community who've been fighting on the front lines of this pandemic. And they, working with the city, have demanded better. And I'm so deeply proud that in partnership with these community organizations and our exceptional staff, Mayor Tory and Deputy Mayor Thompson referenced, our staff at Social Development and Finance Administration and Toronto Public Health, I'm proud that our city has stepped up. The fact is, and I would close with this, that the disproportionate impact of COVID on the black community, it shouldn't surprise us. In public health, we've long known that it's your postal code, not your genetic code, that is the biggest driver of health. Access to housing, access to good jobs, access to health and social services, those are the factors that determine who gets sick and who doesn't, who lives and who dies. That's what structural racism is. That's what it looks like in real time. COVID just exposed this. And so our duty, our duty as decision makers is to address these fundamental inequities, to fix these wrongs, not just in response to COVID, but as we come out of this pandemic and build back stronger and better as well. With that, I'd like to turn the floor back over to Mayor Tory and, and we'll open it up for any questions. Thank you, everybody. So as a reminder, it's one question, one follow-up. Please unmute yourself before you um, begin chatting because we can't do it on our end. First up, we have Felicita from Buy Blocks. Go ahead, Felicita. Uh, th th thank you, thank you, Mr. Amir. Uh, so I have only one question. I'm uh, very happy to know that uh, uh, all this food income information, uh, all these things uh, are, are necessary for the community. Uh, but what my question is, how can we be so sure that all those services facilities are delivered to the black community without um, the ch a challenge like racism and discrimination. Is there any way to make sure that all the things, th those uh, facilities and services are delivered to the community without a challenge? Thank you. Well, I, I might start with an answer and then turn it over to uh, Denise Campbell uh, and, and just say this. 
one of the great advantages to partnering with people who are experienced, uh, well-established organizations that, uh, you know, principally, not exclusively, but principally serve the Black community and led by members of the Black community is that they are, are going to be people accustomed to delivering these services uh, without any form of racism or discrimination. And in fact, in, in a supportive way, uh, they are trusted by the people to whom they're delivering the service. And this is one of the reasons why these partnerships have been so successful throughout uh, the pandemic. And so I have great faith in them. Um, that they will, as our partners and as the people delivering these services, will deliver it to the right people in the right way. Uh, and maybe on that note, I'll ask uh, Denise if she'd like to comment further. So uh, Denise is not here, but Anania is. So we'll give it to Oh, Anania. I'm sorry. I thought Denise was. Okay, Anania, go ahead, please. That's fine. Please say that's a really good question. And I'd like to say, I'd just like to endorse what uh, the mayor has said. That's why we have partnered specifically with um, Black serving agencies many of them Black-led, most of them Black-led, because these agencies are grounded in their community. They know what community needs. They have a relationship and they're trusted. And that's exactly why we have done that, to ensure that what you're, ask, you're asking about do not happen or certainly be minimized as best as possible. Okay, Felicita, I think you just said you had one question. So we'll go to Brendan Kennedy from Toronto Star. Go ahead, Brendan. Hi there. I'm just wondering if, and this is, could be for Mayor Tory or the Deputy Mayor or Councillor Cressy, um, but if you could elaborate on the efforts to address vaccine hesitancy in, in the Black community, is it just a matter of, of uh, public outreach and, and public meetings and that kind of thing, or is, or is there anything more to the, to the efforts there? Again, I will start, and I think Joe, I'm sure, will want to comment on this. Um, I think a lot of this has to do with trust. And you know, if we look at a variety of issues we're dealing with in the city, and our in our push, uh, our very determined push to address issues of anti-black racism in the city, that have built up historically in some cases in a variety of different areas, um, a lot of it has to do with the erosion of trust based on past uh, conduct and past experience and past bad experiences, if I can call it that, with the health. I'll call it the healthcare establishment, and I don't mean that in any way that criticizes any particular people. And I think sometimes uh, information and a, and a building of trust through information. And through assurance from people who themselves are black scientists, uh, you know, and, and, and experts, uh, and with the help of these organizations will uh, get around some very understandable hesitancy that people have based on history and just based on uh, uh, the hesitancy a lot of people have about these kinds of things. And so uh, I think that our efforts in that regard will be very helpful. Joe? Now, I would only, I think the mayor said it right there, Brendan, I would expand on it. So the, the Black Scientist Task Force on Equity, we're doing this work in partnership. It's being co-led by the Tyburn Community Health Centre based in Scarborough. And I would describe sort of three pillars of this work. Education, so to get the accurate information out there in forums that people can access and relate to. The second is outreach to ensure that, as the mayor said, trusted local community members and leaders uh, whether it's your family physician, your, your faith leader, or a community leader are there helping to build that trust and conduct the outreach to support vaccine uptake. And the third pillar I would say is vaccine delivery. And this is, you've heard Chief Pegg speak often about the city's planning to ensure that we have rapid response mobile clinics to support vaccines that can go into harder hit areas and neighborhoods, right into targeted focused areas like Thorncliff, for example. And so education, outreach, and accessible delivery, all together with a specific black, black focus and informed by black leaders. Can I just add as well uh, that, and I agree with the mayor's comments and Councillor Cressy's as well, confidence in education and certainly outreach, but there's also a lot of misinformation that's actually being perpetrated into the black community through social media and other forms as well. Someone approached me recently and said uh, they had seen something on uh, social media where uh, I, I guess it was a group, uh, a couple of French scientists who were talking about wanting to go to Africa and, uh, and, and conduct studies and, and to vaccinate uh, them with uh, vaccines that actually would not be good for them. And, and so people are getting these types of information, which is regrettable. And so we as a city and all of our community partners and agencies and so on have got to do um, a, a better job in terms of creating that level of confidence and providing information because there's a lot of disinformation that's out there that we have to correct so that you know uh, members of the black community are able to get help as opposed to feeling that uh, 
that whatever assistance that they need, they need is not available. And that's what the leadership of the mayor and our team are bringing forward along with the community partners to ensure that the accuracy of information is available to ensure that the confidence and education and the advocacy uh, to ensure that people will roll up their seats when it's their turn to get the vaccine. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor, I think you, you actually just anticipated my follow up, which was about uh, misinformation, particularly in, in social media. And uh, is there anything specific in this campaign that's going to be addressing that? Or is the hope that it's just uh, a matter of um, getting the message out by any means? So if you, I can kick that off, uh, one of the 12 agencies we've partnered with here is the Black Health Alliance with one of their focused um, pieces of work here is on outreach and communications within the black community in our city. And what is so part of their strategies that they've talked about, whether it's directed and targeted WhatsApp messaging programs, in addition to the online town hall forums, and even so far as going door to door, counteracting misinformation, we need to make sure that we can get the right information out to the people who need it in the channels and mediums they use, but also delivered by trusted community partners they respect. Uh, and so th that's one specific focus I would just highlight there. I want to concur uh, with respect to the comments that uh, Councillor Cressy has made. Um, clearly, these organizations that have been working in the community for a long period of time are, in fact, quite trusted. And so what we bolster and reinforce and assist them in having the, the ability to reach more members of the community and to ensure that each one tells someone else and so on about their positive experience. I think that if we couple all of these uh, different things together, we will get the messaging out and get people to become much more accepting of what is necessary for them to stay healthy and safe. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Next up, we have Matt Bingley from Global. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, good morning. Um, my question's just about the funding and the way that it's being announced. Uh, I'm, I'm just recalling previous announcements where uh, there were specific tranches of money that were going towards uh, community agencies to help black Torontonians. And, and I could have sworn that there was a third on the way. I, I'm just wondering if this is an extension of that or if this is just more of a targeted way of, of getting that money out there. I'll start just by simply saying they're different programs. The TO support this program, and they're very much related to one another, uh, but the other one uh, arose out of uh, principally two sources of money. The first being money that was distributed by the province of Ontario for uh, reallocation, as it were, by cities, including Toronto, to community organizations. And so you're correct in recalling there were, in fact, two tranches of that money, and it was supplemented by some money coming from a foundation set up to help with these kinds of social uh, causes. And so those were allocated to individual organizations to help them generally with their work. This is a much more targeted approach for the black community itself, based on all the work that we referenced that had been done by the community organizations and the staff to pinpoint um, a particularly disproportionate impact that COVID-19 was having on those communities. And as a result is, is in a different, I'll call it a different funding stream. Now, did you want to pick up on that, uh, Joe or, or Deputy Mayor? No, I think you captured it. The three three buckets, TO supports yeah. um, as number one. The second was the targeted um, equity measures through the fall that we've continued to expand. And then the third is the new and emerging vaccine work, which is a third tranche of money. And taken all together, those three buckets with direct focus on the black community amounts to just under seven billion. I should say yeah. one more thing, which is that in respect of portions of this money, because we recognize the fact that the city wants to and is in a good position to make a contribution to these things. But we have, I think, without exception, in the case of all of these different supports uh, requested and in some cases received support from the province of Ontario with respect to the delivery of these extra supports. Um, but we still have, um, I'll call it applications in front of them, submissions in front of them with respect to the funding of some of these initiatives, which we think properly should be at the very least a shared responsibility between ourselves and the other governments. Thanks for that. Just to follow up on uh, some of the questions about vaccine hesitancy. I'm just wondering how you feel the uh, the supply chain issues, just the, the complete slowing of, of them rolling out is going to, uh, you know, impede getting to those people and, and 
system the system is uh, is actually there to benefit them. Well, I will start and say that say this. I think this could be seen as a kind of good news, bad news, uh, you know, kind of situation. I mean, the bad news is that obviously if there's a certainty of supply, if people know what the schedule is and you're not seeing the kinds of complications, notwithstanding the efforts of the prime minister and others to address it, um, that is less confusing for people. Uh, If there's any good news at all, and there's not much in all this, but it could be the fact that we have more time. Uh, to make sure that we can make the efforts with the help of the of the black uh, scientists and others to get around the hesitancy, because some of this public information and public education that Deputy Mayor Thompson referred to takes time. You have to have the virtual meetings. People have to attend them um, and you have to get information out into the hands of the community through these organizations. And so we have a bit of time to do that, but obviously we would like to see the vaccine delivered as soon as possible so that the most vulnerable people can be vaccinated first, as is the priority set by the province. I don't know if the deputy mayor wants to comment or. Agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Matt. Next up, we have Nick from CBC. Go ahead, Nick. Hi, thanks. Uh, another question about uh, the the vaccine issue here. Um, I'm just wondering, um, you know, presumably a lot of these uh, community organizations are would be doing this kind of work already, family doctors and things like that. So can you just explain maybe a little more in sort of concrete terms what this city investment is going to do to change those efforts and maybe amplify them? Go ahead. Matthew, whoever, uh, yeah, maybe cancel. Well, happy to kick it off, Nick. Um, I mean, the principle here is developing a vaccine is only the first step. Ensuring that people take the vaccine, that is what makes vaccines effective. And so ensuring that vaccines are accessible and available to all Torontonians, no matter your background, where you live, where you work, the color of your skin. And so the the work we're doing here is developing in real time, not a cookie cutter approach to the delivery of vaccines, but rather targeted population specific approaches to ensure that in the black community, that we're able and working with trusted leaders to get vaccines out the door and into arms. In the indigenous community, uh, for those experiencing homelessness, in the South Asian and Indo-Caribbean community, targeted, focused, vaccine-specific outreach and delivery programs uh, in partnership with the province, but in many cases being driven by some of our, our team here at the city, that's part of the work. And what we're announcing here today is that critical work specifically for the black community. But there's much more to come as we continue to work with our provincial colleagues, folks on the ground in other uh, population specific communities. I could just add that uh, many of these community partners were already stressed uh, prior to us wanting to ask them for additional assistance and so on. So there's a necessity for us to be able to provide uh, additional resources to assess them as uh, to, to assist them as part of the outreach and so on. So I think it's important to understand that because many of these organizations as they have existed and so on have already were, were financially stressed. And I think it's an important opportunity for us to work with them and engage them with uh, additional resources so that they can expand and re- have uh, a greater reach into the community. One, one final comment on the vaccination front. I think a lot of the work the city has been doing since last fall hasn't yet had a chance to show itself uh, simply because we've been in the earlier stages set by the province to do some very important things like long term care residences and so on. But um, we have been working under the leadership of Chief Peg and others, uh, including those present on this call uh, from the staff to develop a network of places and ways and channels uh, through which uh, we will carry out our responsibility dictated by the province when the time comes and that work has been going on and has been continuous and will has put us in a position where I really do believe we will be ready when we get to the stage where there can be uh, immunization of these communities and the broader community, millions of 